Hello everyone. Hi, hello everyone and welcome to our latest LinkedIn Live. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Carter and this is Stuart Miller from Zero. Hello Stuart. Hi Elizabeth, how are you doing? Well, thanks so much for having me. Well, we like to save the best for last. This is our final um, live, our final LinkedIn live, um, well, final live um, ahead of the Bookkeeper Summit. So um, every Friday for the last six weeks, we've had um, industry celebs join us. Um, and um, Well, they're busy and is that why I'm here? <laughs> and then, and Stuart Miller. So, um, <laughs> let us, so let us know you're here. Um, and tell us where you are. Tell us if you are coming to the Bookkeeper Summit. Tell us if you're not. And then explain the reasons, please, why you are not coming. Um, as we start off, what I would first like to ask is, does any, would anybody like to guess what Stuart Miller's wrestling name is? Was. Is? Was. Very was. much retired now. But uh, was. Stuart, in a previous life, Stuart had a career-based um, uh, name, wrestling name. Um, and um, I was delighted to hear about it. So if you'd like to think about um, Stuart's wrestling name, and also maybe if you've got your own wrestling name, there might be an AI device that will help you do that. So on to more important things. Um, Bookkeeper Summit is taking place this um, next week on Monday, the 11th of November in London at the Park Plaza Hotel. We are really looking forward to seeing everybody coming um, and being in the room. If you haven't got tickets, please don't worry, because we also have a virtual event happening on Wednesday and Thursday, the 13th and 14th of November, and you can still join in. And tickets are 99 quid or 49 quid if you're a bookkeeper, an ICB student, a bookkeeping student, um, and we'd love to, for you to join in. But Stuart, you're, you're going to be there. You're going to be there on Monday. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really excited. I couldn't attend last year because we had zero road shows at the time, but I'm I'm there this year and I'm so excited by by the content. Um, there's so much there for our bookkeepers, for people in our industry. And I think it's one of, I said it on LinkedIn earlier in the week, it's genuinely one of my favorite events of the year to go to. Not only because it's a great opportunity to celebrate our wonderful bookkeeping community, but also because you see the camaraderie and the networking and everyone is there to elevate everyone else. It's such a lovely vibe to be there. And as, as we said on the agenda, we've got so many fantastic speakers. Um, my highlight, as always, is going to be my um, my HMRC buddy, Craig Ogilvy, who is going to be there talking about making tax digital. Um, I, I, we, I was saying to Elizabeth before um, we, we went live on this, I first met Craig around this time last year when he was a new impost as NTD director. And I remember he was saying, so what are the big things that are not working with MTD. And for all the interactions that Zero's had with, our, with the ICB and ICB members, it was a case of the need for that multiple agent piece. Mm. And that was the first thing that we spoke about up in Edinburgh. And he said, well, accountants have told me this isn't a really important piece of functionality, but let me, let me go away with it. And sure enough to his word, he went off and said, no, this is really important to bookkeepers. And bookkeepers are a driving force of making tax digital. So I think what we are seeing in the last 12 months of HMRC, essentially starting Making Tax Digital version two, the team that Craig has assembled with the likes of people like Jen Staves, Katie Gerald, the fantastic digital relationship managers who are, who, who are working with our agents and our software industry, they're really working hard to make sure that MTD is a success. But most importantly, the understanding now of an HMRC that the bookkeepers are the driving force behind MTD. And I think that's really, really encouraging. It's a testament to the voice of the ICB and its members mm -hmm. for making sure that these issues are really, really well addressed. And I'm sure that Craig will cover these during his um, his session on Monday as well for those who are in attendance. Yeah. Um, Amy, uh, Amy keeps on saying that he's the literal director of, of Making Tax Digital. And he is. He's, um, it's great to have him there. We have been involved with HMRC uh, over the last couple of months, last six months or so. Well, we, we've always been involved with HMRC, but specifically around making tax digital. And we've still held several consultations with members. And we've got a working group as well that Steve Worrell's heading up. So if any bookkeepers want to get involved with that, um, there's more information on the website about it. Um, but yeah, as you say, it's a MTD is a massive opportunity for bookkeepers. So Craig will be talking about that on Monday. And then on the virtual summit, which 
if you've got a ticket for the in-person summit, you can come to the virtual as well. Um, on the so on the Thursday, we've got Rob Thomas also from HMRC, and he's going to be running a bit more of a a Q and A. So you can you can you can put your questions to him to him there. So it's really valuable. Um, and uh, Lenny from HMRC described it as the the MTD is the biggest thing to happen to bookkeepers since the invention of the calculator. And I you know and we, and we can see that. And what we're interested in doing, working with Zero and and um, and many other providers, is really thinking about how bookkeepers and accountants work together, um, and how how bookkeepers can solve a lot of the headache from a from an accountant point of view um, around delivering the requirements of MTD. And, it, and I think and it, I think you're seeing it now as well, though. That and again, I know I power, you know date myself badly by when I when I was in practice, and it was a case of you're an accountant or a bookkeeper. Now those lines are very much blurred and the importance of the role of bookkeeper and accountant, it is on parallel and it should be on parallel based on the amount of work and effort that bookkeepers put in. And one of the, the things that we're going to hear on, on the Monday um, summit session uh, by my colleague Kate Hayward, who's the UK country manager, it's how essential bookkeepers are to that growth model of those small businesses and those businesses they know everything about that business yeah. and how those bookkeepers can continue to upskill and evolve to make sure not only are we providing fantastic value to our customers and clients, but also being as efficient so we've got time to grow our practices, to be able to do everything we want in our life. Because I think that's the key thing as bookkeepers. We know everything about our businesses. And I think that's the really nice thing. We know when our clients' children are going to university or if they get married or if they've got a new dog and we're their trusted advisor. And I think that's what's so important as we go forward, that the skills that bookkeepers continue to evolve and develop to make sure they stay as that incredible trusted source and insightful, um, insightful partner to that business. It's such an exciting time to be a bookkeeper. Absolutely. And and the whole theme for next week, the whole next week's Global Bookkeeping Week, the whole theme for next week is really thinking about thinking about the future, the future of, of bookkeepers, uh, the future of bookkeeping, and um to make sure that people feel informed, um, but most of all that they feel confident. Um so we've got some really interesting sessions. Mark Lee is running a session around the skills that um uh, the, sk the skills that bookkeepers are going to need. He's actually promised me two tricks, not just one, two magic tricks this time, uh, which is great because he's he's only got 25 minutes to talk, so I don't know how he's going to fit them in. So Mark Lee's going to be talking about that. Um, and all, all the talks are going to be looking at the future. Um, we've got a really great guest speaker this year. Um, and um, and so I'm just looking at the agenda myself, um, called um, Alistair Frost, and he's focusing on the future-ready mindset. And he's out of the industry. He's ex Microsoft, but his um, his whole career has been based on helping people prepare for the future and and, and what they need. Um, shall I put you on the spot and and ask you what you think that bookkeepers need to be aware of and that, or conscious of for, for the future? Yeah, so I think that ties in, and it's almost like it's a seamless plug into the session that I'm doing at the virtual summit, which I've you called. AI, I'm not just a bookkeeper, because obviously it can't be a stream yeah. session without a terrible cheese. We love content. a pun. Yes, thank you so much, Stuart. This is brilliant. Yeah, go on. Tell but us about your think, session. But I think AI is going to be a really important thing for bookkeepers going forward. And as always, we've heard for 20 years, computers are coming to steal our jobs. We're not, and if anything, we're thriving. It's allowing us to have skills. It's removing toil from our businesses. So the session I'm going to be running on the, uh, at the virtual summit on Thursday next week is how we can upskill ourselves and our teams, but include AI tools in our learning and development and our professional development. If we have teams, how we can upskill those colleagues as well, just to make sure we're future-proofing ourselves. Because I think the key thing, which I will obviously be addressing in more detail in the session is, AI can do some wonderful things, but who's gonna interpret those wonderful insights mm -hmm. and insightings to our clients? A computer can't do that we can as bookkeepers and that's what i think is really exciting about the tech yes our roles may evolve and change but they've evolved over the last 20 years anyway with things like automatic bank rec cash coding whatever you've got in your software it's just given us an incredible tool to be able to add added value to our to our clients and make sure that we're preparing ourselves to that future thinking so i think having some uh, 
some chat about AI and I think a few other sessions throughout the, uh, the, the whole global bookkeeping week is going to cover those areas as well. And I also think another area for, for consideration, again, is things like e-invoicing, how we're going to help build up security. I know we were expecting a consultation document um, in the budget that's now been pushed probably until about January 2025. We've also then got, for any of us with clients who do cross-border sales uh, with the EU, we've had in the last couple of days, the EU Commission's just approved the concept of VIDA or that in the digital age. And that's where e-invoicing is essentially going to be mandated for all cross-border trade in Europe from 2030. So there's a chance if we have any clients or customers or businesses who are doing trade with the EU, there may be some changes and requirements we need to make in not only to our record keeping, but our VAT filing as well. Mm -hmm. So there are some really cool things coming up in the invoicing. But as we've said before, it's all about making sure that our ICB members have that knowledge. They're armed with the right information at the right time so we can go and be, be the best bookkeepers we can be. That's what we want. Um, I think when we talked at ICB about the content, that the, 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 the type of talks we want, um, for the for the summit, we wanted to make sure that not everything not everything was was AI focused because we we, uh, we wanted to talk more about how people use AI and I think that's what a lot of your talks going to cover as well, isn't it? That it's it's about the, the practical uses of it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, and as you said, it's not just about AIs; it's about the people. So that's where I think sort of Alistair's session and Mark's session with his magic tricks as well. This is all going to really help us as bookkeepers grow for the future. And, and as we said um, to start with why I love the summit so much, it's a great opportunity to network with peers and colleagues in the industry. Gone are the days where bookkeepers have to hide their secret special recipe for success. Everyone's willing to help each other elevate. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fa the fantastic opportunity. And if you're coming to the summit for the first time and you're not coming with colleagues, you're a bit nervous, you will find people to talk to, engage with, such a warm and welcoming group of people, whether that be a fellow bookkeepers, ICB staff, the vendors and the exhibitors who are going to be there. It's a fantastic opportunity to start really building out your own network as well. And if you're nervous of those things, it's absolutely fine just to, to sit on the periphery and watch it all happen. But if you ever want to have a chat, Myself, my colleagues from Zero there. If you feel that you're a bit alone, you're going for the first time, just come and have a chat. We were yeah. all lovely people. We don't bite. And we're all very passionate about the same thing, which is making bookkeepers as best as they can be. Yeah, I think you're right. And and when we've talked before, I know there's lots of ICB members who are or who are there ready, willing to help if anybody is feeling a bit um nervous about coming along and it's a big thing you know we spoke to joe i spoke to joe wood last week and she was saying you know that she still feels it you know that, that sort of walking into a room and having to start to, um, talking to people we don't necessarily know them is it's it's quite overwhelming and also we know a lot of our bookkeepers are working at the you know working at, in a home office or working in a small small business to walk into a room when there's 400 people can be can be quite overwhelming but uh everyone is very friendly and also, um, you'll be really well looked after. You don't have to decide where to go. There's just one main plenary room. So you don't have to go, am I missing this or am I missing that? So you can um, you can enjoy the exhibition in the breaks and then you can join your colleagues in the plenary room. And the food is excellent as well. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> we, always, we, always do, we always do really great food. Right, I thought we'd maybe have a look at the um, at the virtual summit agenda a little bit, Stuart, if that's okay. So I might just Absolutely. share my screen in case people want to see it. This is where I just take a bit of time to just um, to do it because obviously I can't I can't multitask really. There we are. Okay, so you can see that the the virtual agenda. So. After we have finished the um, in-person summit on Monday, we go straight into the ICB Lucre Awards on Monday night. Tuesday, there's a brief respite for everybody at, at ICB. And then Wednesday, we head straight into our, our tech day. We've done this to bring together all the best software for bookkeepers. Um, I'm really pleased that to open it, we have um, Richard Sargent and Lara Manton talking about the um, ICB um, guide for um, software for bookkeepers, which is something that's available to download on the website. Um, Richard wrote this with the help of Lara, and it really is the most comprehensive guide you're going to get in terms of the different types of software you can use within your um, within your practice. Does feature zero. 
Um, and then uh, we run a series of demos. And these demos are great because they are designed for bookkeepers. You're not getting an accountant's um, demo. You're not getting a, um, an end user's demo. You're getting, you're getting a specific demo for bookkeepers. And all of them, you can either watch them live or you can go back to them, pick and choose. It's all available for, for a couple of months afterwards as well. So that's the Wednesday. It's quite straightforward. Um, you can still network on the um, on the platform as well. So Stuart, you can direct message people. You met. You can direct message Stuart and ask him what his wrestling name was if you want to. You can. There's there's groups that you can you can gather as well. And there's just a conversation that goes on all day, which is lovely. Um, so that's a nice um, nine thirty till um, like three fifteen. You'll be there back in time for the for the school run. Thursday is our full summit. This is a big, big event and really worth blocking out your, your diary for. Um, who's that at 9.05? Brilliant opener there from Stuart Miller. Thank you very much. But um, as I said, we've also got um, Rob Jones from HMRC, who's going to be able to answer some questions as well. Anything else you wanted to pick out, Stuart, from the, from the agenda in the morning? I mean, as, as a director of compliance at Zero, having sort of Gary, Abigail and Sadia there for the, uh, from the compliance team of ICB, I think that's going to be a must, must attend. Um, I, I love that. Anything that Rebecca Bennyworth delivers, if, if it's about tax and Rebecca doesn't mention it, it's probably not worth knowing. So it's great yeah. to have Rebecca yeah. on board. And also having Ian Holloway come down as well. I've, you know, Ian's a fantastic speaker, incredible you know, payroll experts as well. So it's really, really good to have Ian there. So if payroll is your bag as well, make sure you catch Ian's session as well. And I said, yeah, um, my session, AI, not just a bookkeeper. It's not that pun laden, but it's a, it's, it's a good you're, session. I think we should have some fun with it. You're the only one with a pun in the title though. So you're, you're already winning with me. Um, yeah, just a little thing about the, um, our AML team, we've just issued a, um, ICB has just issued its annual AML report. So that's available on the website. And also um, Gary has written us an, an update as well for members. So that's on, that came out in, in the newsletter today, if you haven't seen it, and we'll send that direct again next week because it's such an important um, lot of information. So there's lots of information. We're constantly trying to keep our members up to date with everything. So that, that, this is the morning of the summit. There are breaks and things in between as well. In the afternoon, we break into tracks, and this is where it gets really interesting. So we've actually got a third track that is dedicated just for students, which you can find out about on the website. Um, and um, so we've got two tracks, but you, they're designed around people who are looking either. We know that not all bookkeepers want to grow their business, but if you are, we've got some talks about how you grow your business, but. And so if you're really happy with where you are and you just want to get better at what you do, we've got other things as well. But you don't have to stay in lane. You can you can pick and choose. And what we're I like, really... the, I love the what the session on the e-commerce bookkeeping as well, yeah. because we're seeing so many more people go down the e-commerce platform with tools such as Shopify, Amazon Shop, Etsy, whatever we've got. We're bringing into this whole new world of commerce where people are fantastic, especially the creative industries. They love to be part of the e-commerce platform, but not to be disrespectful to our wonderful businesses who are in the um, creative industries. They are not numbers people. No. They are fantastic, no. artistic, wonderful people. So if you have clients who are in that industry, um, Helen's session at one o'clock on, on track one is definitely something I'd recommend going to if you have the clients in that e-commerce space. Yeah. Um, it's great. And we were talking, I was talking to Elizabeth, um, Elizabeth Corday from who's now A2X and a bookkeeper who her, her business just thrived during the pandemic because of course so many business, she, she's focused on e-commerce and so many businesses needed to switch very, very quickly over to, to e-commerce. So it's, it's still a growing area. What, what I'm really pleased about with this as well, it just showcases how many, uh, the a wide variety of, of ICB bookkeepers, but also Natasha Everard, Libby Walklet, Laura Day Henderson, then the non-members who are still sharing their expertise because this event is for everyone. You don't have to be an ICB member. It's probably better if you're a bookkeeper or a payroll professional, more suitable for you, but there's a really wide um, variety and it's got very much an open, open door. Um, and then we have experts as well. Ashley Lees, we're really pleased to have Ashley, just fresh off the plane from Canada. And Phil Sayers is a is a sales trainer who we um, we've done some work with previously. Not so much talking about sales, but really talking about 
um, how to overcome overcome those objections if you feel that you need to add different services in and perhaps you need to start charging more and you need to have those conversations. So Phil's got a great session around that as well. I I said it's the variety. It's really nice to have an event where there is genuinely something for everyone. I said, from if you look down the agenda of the list of the summit for those who are speaking, you can't go wrong. And then from the virtual summit, I know we've said it's it's the who's who of sort of of the industry, but and me. Um, but I just think it's so fantastic to have those breakouts and then to come back in in the afternoon. Obviously, having sort of Joe Wood and Zoe Whitman there at the end as well. It's always great to have have those two in place as well. And who doesn't love an all star panel oh. for bookkeeping? I mean, if that's not going to take get you to stay until the end of the session, and as you said, Elizabeth, the fact that people can dip in and out, some of these will be all of these sessions will be available on demand for a period of time after the conference as well. So if you have to go and do school run, you have to go. So we know life gets in the way, which is why a virtual summit right. is so valuable. So let me tell you about the um, All Stars panel. We need to put the, all the information on here, actually. Um, Tim Chilston from TPS, who's making waves in uh, in the Channel Islands, is going to be on the on the um, on the panel. We've got M Manchi, who has um, got a really successful practice in London that she's been running for a long time. She's been sharing her experience, and also um, Ellie is going to be joining us as well. Um, and so Amy will be talking to them about um, about their their experience and their and their practice and and how they work and and sharing their tips for for success. So it's we lo- we love a we love a panel of bookkeepers. We've got one on the, in the in person one as well. Um, so um, and we have that at the end of the day. So we're looking forward to that one as well. I'm going to add those names shortly. Um, do you want to do some speculation very quickly before we finish about the about the winners of the of the Lucre Awards? Are you up for a bit? I, of- I, I well, I think we did this last year, and I think I got absolutely everyone wrong. And then I started hedging my bets and saying all of them should win the yes, awards. Yes, you didn't want to offend anyone. That's fine. Well, but it, I, I, I think that's the thing as well. You know, it's the Lucre Awards again. It's such a great celebration of the incredible world of bookkeepers. And the fact that we have so many incredible nominees and shortlisted people gives me such confidence, especially when we look at the small business world, that if people need a bookkeeper, the ICB has such a plethora of incredible talent to best serve those small businesses. So, you know, I didn't even mean to say that. I just said it. No, I know. But but, but, but it's true, though. And again, I think that's, again, I, I say this without having to do any form of sales spiel because from both my personal standpoint and a professional standpoint and the view of all of the colleagues at zero, all of that is true. You need good bookkeepers to help Mm -hmm. small businesses thrive. And while this sounds very, you know, ideological, the more bookkeepers are involved, the more small businesses who can thrive, the more the small businesses thrive, the more money they make, the more money they make, as sad as it sounds, the more tax they pay, the more tax they pay, the more schools and hospitals there are. So bookkeepers that building foundation to fit building a great economy, a great life for everyone around us. And I think that's why it's so important to really celebrate the incredible people who are in the bookkeeping industry, who are that linchpin to getting all this started. Do you right. Yep. You're pushing it over open door with me. Um, what, one of the things Amy always says is that our, our vision is that, um, you know, behind every great business, there's a great bookkeeper and behind every great bookkeeper, there's there's ICB. So we just want to support people. Um, what makes my heart swell was we doubled the number of entries we had this year for the, for the Lucre Awards. And to have all these people, I mean, these are the shortlisted people. These are not all the entries to have all these people who took the time to complete an application form. I mean, some, and they did lots. You know, Stephanie Marshall, she, she's on for the quadruple. She's, the, the, she's, not, she's finalist in four, four, um, four categories. Also, so is Kirsty St. John as well. Um, so there's, there's, there's people who are really making an effort um, to, to apply. And what, yes, yeah, so what makes my heart sing is that bookkeepers are recognising that they are worth, recognizing you know they're they're worth celebrating so this is wonderful um the uh from a from a bookkeeper point of view the, we've added two new categories this year client experience and payroll professional um and the client experience one in particular was really and this is why i've got so many finalists because 
the judges were just absolutely on a dead heat with um with scoring them all because they're also amazing I think that's again though a testament isn't it to the the foundation that the ICB gives these bookkeepers to to have this level of excellence in client support yeah. and it's really nice to see payroll professionals again given that showcase because it's becoming even more and more complex. So if you are a payroll professional as well, you know, hats off to you because it is not an easy task. I think, again, from a payroll standpoint, a lot of people think it's just numbers in, numbers out, but it's so, so much com more complicated than that. When you start yeah. looking at auto-enrollment, pension contributions, you've got neonatal care, changes to everything. So I think it's absolutely amazing to see our payroll professionals in the ICB recognised this year at the yeah. Rutgers as well. There is no one more important than the person who does the, the payroll. Don't talk to me about Donald Trump. They're the most important people in the world <laughs> because if people don't get paid, then, you know, we're on, you, you don't feed your children, do you? So I think Sorry. payroll professionals are very are the VIPs. Um, then we also have the vendor. So, so the, the, the bookkeeper awards, people entered and they are judged um, and scored or scored independently by our judges. And then the vendor awards, um, they are um, entered into and then they're voted on. You know, real, real, it's a real democratic process. So um, uh, obviously we've got our friends Zero over here in the Bookkeeper Software of the Year. Um, and I think you've got, you're in payroll as well. But um, it's great to see new businesses new software coming in as well um apron have had an incredible rise over um the last couple of years bookkeepers really love apron not just because they've got great coffee and um they do have great coffee they do they have, have great phenomenal coffee. coffee great coffee and um they have assured us that they are bringing some coffee um again this year it's very popular in my house so i, I promise i'll bring it bring it back people like um Adfin and um, and um, Approval Max new, and Buddy, new new um, emerging um, software. And uh, Buddy had some great merch when they first started doing some of the shows. They they had great merch. And I think they had some like Converse as well. And it's like they yeah. had some incredible stuff from Buddy to have. I definitely had a Payroll Queen um, uh, pin badge and and um, their their mascot that they have coming along. Well, the yeah. mascot they have coming along, Buddy the Body, but the Buddy the Fox, he's coming along uh, to have a have a cuddle as well. So that's good. But it's so, always fun when the mascots come along, and other people bring additional mascots because at, at the uh, Digital Accounting Show there was a mascot off, so it was really funny. I believe Buddy was there as well. Yes. But what this shows again, what what I find is really exciting for for bookkeepers is there's so much choice now, and then it really makes software vendors up their game mm -hmm. because competition sparks innovation and innovation means there's better options in the market for our bookkeepers. So seeing such a variety of names, newcomers, established players in this list from the vendor awards, it's always really exciting. Everyone wants to win and everyone will be grumpy when they don't, but it's always done with politeness and sort of. It's a really <laughs> joyful. It's a, there's a lot of joy in the room. And of course, we all, we all, all the bookkeepers know each other as well. So there's a lot of um, good feeling. Um, between them. I mean there is a lot of good feeling apart from the um the ICB branches because that one fight they fight to the death on that one I was gonna say I wouldn't want to be a judge for that <laughs> good luck right so I just wanted to bring up this one as well the bookkeeper's champion here because this is hotly contested this people just nominate this Chris Downing and Joe Woods would were nominated last year and so was Kirsty St John and Kirsty won last year um, and <laughs> Kirsty says she's practicing Oscar face. I know Kirsty. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Kirsty won last year as well, and I think actually uh, Johan from um, from Engage App. He was he was a finalist last year as well. Um, but also Natasha Everard in there. Are you are you aware of Natasha's work, Stuart? I'm aware of everyone on this list, and it's again to have five incredible people championing the cause of our bookkeepers and as you said before the number of other people who could be on this list as well it's yeah, yeah it's 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 incredible but 
again, you wouldn't want to try and pick this. Good luck to the voters who are going to uh, to pick these, and I hope no one's learned to use an AI bot yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not getting involved with the winners. Right. Okay. That's. I'm going to draw it to a close. Um, thank you for joining us, Stuart. If you are joining us on uh, for the Bookie Summit on Monday, you'll find a very, very warm welcome from 8.30 in the morning. We actually have um, a pre-summit drinks reception, which all, all um, delegates are welcome to as well, on Sunday, the 10th of November, in the um, in the bar at the hotel. Um, that's on from 7.30. So do join us and we can have a... Um, uh, raise a glass with you so then the program for the week is yes monday 8 30 amy copeland's on stage at 9 20 and you better be in that room i'm going to be very very strict with everybody all day around the timings we've got a lot to get through um and then we'll we we have the lucas uh from six o'clock in the evening and then wednesday and thursday is the virtual summit and if you want to come to that there are tickets available for the virtual where you will get to see Stuart miller Thank you for your time. And other people to sell the and tickets. And I'm also there. <laughs> you're the real. You're the real draw. You and Benny were your draw. Good. Thank you, everybody. It's been great to, um, for you to join us these last couple of weeks as well on a Friday. I appreciate your company. And thank you very much, Stuart Miller. Thank you very much for having me. Bye-bye.